know who this guy is, don't you, Pit? Of course I do! It's Mario! He was your first ally in the fight against the subspace army. What you may not know is that he's actually quite famous. There aren't many people who don't know who Mario is. Man, I don't know whether to fight him or ask for his autograph. Fight first, fanboy later. Oh, do you think he'll sign my wings? Looks like it's me versus DK. His arms are like tree trunks, so his attacks are incredibly powerful. Given his size, he also moves quite quickly. Combine that speed and power with his long reach, and you've got an opponent who's good at almost everything. Yeah, except for dressing himself. That necktie really doesn't leave much to the imagination. True, but it is his signature look. It's probably best not to mention it. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of one of his giant punches or smash attacks. When he attacks you, don't use your shield. Just get out of the way and then counterattack. And watch where you come in for a landing. Huh. I can't put my finger on it, but Link seems different somehow. Well, this Link is technically a different person from the Link you fought before. This incarnation is known as the Hero of the Wild. He was once Hyrule's champion, but he fell into a 100-year slumber after using all his strength to fight the Calamity. One hundred years might not be a long time to a goddess like you, Lady Palatina, but that's more than enough time for an entire world to change. You're right, Pit. When Link woke from the slumber of restoration, not only was his world unrecognizable, he also lost his memory. I can't even imagine what that would be like. Lady Palatina, isn't there something the gods can do to help him restore his memory? Meddling in the affairs of another world is never a good idea. Although I do like Link, and his swordsmanship is quite impressive. The Master Sword, also known as the Sword that Seals the Darkness, reveals its true strength in the presence of the Calamity. Oh, cool! Does that mean it's OP against Ganondorf? No, Ganondorf is from a different game. You should really do more research before you jump into a fight. If you expect to win, you need to know your opponent's backstory and abilities. Link has a lot of different weapons at his disposal. Oh look! There's Metroid! That's not a Metroid! That's Samus! Just like Link isn't named Zelda. And like Pit's name isn't Icarus! Okay, this joke has officially run its course. Moving on then. Pit, you can reflect Samus's charge shot with your Guardian Orbitars. However, Samus can throw a storm of shots at you. If you use your Orbitars too often, she'll know what you're up to. So try to reflect strategically, as opposed to your usual game plan. Is that Dark Samus? You know her? She's a being of pure Phazon, created after Metroid Prime absorbed DNA from Samus's Phazon suit. No wonder she looks like Samus. Samus's suit and a Metroid combined? There's no way she isn't strong. Oh, she's strong, all right. Along with ruthless and cunning. Um, so what's a Phazon? It's Phazon. A blue radioactive substance that can produce massive amounts of energy. However, it can suddenly mutate and become invasive to mineral elements, making it incredibly dangerous. The monkeys never should have messed with the stuff, but they insisted and it blew up in their faces. Dark Samus was defeated, but the power of Phazon brought her back. A sentient Phazon being with free will. Between Dark Samus and Ridley, Samus has no shortage of arch enemies. It's Yoshi! Let me get this straight. Yoshi lays eggs, but he's actually male? Uh, shouldn't you know that, oh goddess of nature? There's nothing natural about this guy. Yeah, I see your point. Well, all living beings contain both female and male elements. It appears that Yoshi is no different. Wonder what's inside all those eggs. Chocolate? Focus, Pit. If you use your shield when Yoshi's pulling off an egg roll, you can grab him. Keep that in mind. It's always easy to pick Kirby out of a crowd. Aww, he's so squishy and adorable. True, but he's still a formidable foe. He's got all kinds of moves, and he's top-notch at recovering. Does this guy have any weaknesses? Just what you'd expect. His weight, or rather his lack of weight. So, it shouldn't be hard to send them flying, huh? Right. The question is how to do that. 
Oh, that part's easy. Just keep wailing on him. Then we'll see who's stronger, that little puffball or Kirby. Got any tips for fighting Fox? Fox McCloud is the leader of the mercenary flight team, Star Fox. His trademark is incredible speed. It's about time you showed up, Fox! That was a terrible General Pepper Pit. You should be wary of his blaster, too. Everybody, stay alert! Focus, Pit. You might think Fox's blaster doesn't hurt all that much and ignore it, but you'll soon find you've taken lots of damage. Sorry, I'm back. Okay, I'll just reflect his shots with my Guardian Orbitars. I figured you'd say that. Huh? Is that not what I should do? Like I said, he's quick on his feet, so there's no telling when he'll suddenly rush in and grab you. You've got to watch your back constantly when Fox is around. Do a barrel roll! Aw, look at that cute little guy. It's a Pokémon. And not just any Pokémon. Actually, that Pokémon is called a Pikachu. Pikachu evolves from Pichu, and when a Pikachu is fully evolved, it becomes a Raichu. It's quite rare for a Pokémon to be more famous in its middle stage than its final evolution. True, but Pikachu is a special case. I mean, it's the most famous of all the Pokémon. Uh, excuse me. Hello? What is it, Pit? I hate to interrupt your musings on Pokémon, but I could really use some Smash Brothers help right about now. Oh, right. I forgot where we were. Okay, here's the tip. Dodge Pikachu's thunder and then counterattack. You can also zap Pikachu by reflecting its thunder back at itself. And nothing is more satisfying than that. Look! It's Luigi! Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Aw, oh, don't say that. After all, he even had his own year. I don't remember that. Though I suppose if he's number two out of all these fighters, that's actually pretty good. His attacks are no joke. You're right. Have you seen his super jump punch and green missile? In some ways, he might even be stronger than his brother. Too bad about that unfortunate L on his forehead. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that stands for winner. I'm picking up on some weird kind of energy here. What you feel is Ness's PSI. What's PSI? It's a general term for supernatural abilities. Supernatural? Isn't that pretty unscientific? Said the angel to the goddess. What are you getting at? Pit, we're having this conversation via telepathy. Meanwhile, the power of flight is a type of psychokinesis, and I see you from the heavens using clairvoyance. Finally, I call you back from the battlefield with something akin to teleportation. And believe me, I truly appreciate all that stuff you do with things. Anyway, if Ness tries to recover via PK Thunder and you reflect it, that will really ruin his day. Give it a try when you get a chance. Whoa! It's Captain Falcon! Oh, he's a captain! What ship does he command? I think he's more like a pilot or something. All these fighters have tons of skill and experience, but you can still hold your own. If we brought vehicles into the picture, though, that would be a totally different story. Good thing that's not the case. I'd be no match for an F-Zero machine or an R-Wing. Plus, those G-Diffuser systems are terrible for the environment. Uh, you sure know a lot about space machinery. For being the goddess of nature and all. Anyway, if you're near Captain Falcon, watch out for his jump and falcon punch combo. That's Jigglypuff, the balloon Pokémon. Look at the way it floats! It must be light as air. Don't let its cuddly appearance fool you. It's one of the most aerodynamic fighters out there. And it has a deadly attack called Rest. When Jigglypuff lands this move, the effects can be devastating. However, that move does render Jigglypuff vulnerable for a short period of time afterward. So, when you see Jigglypuff start to fall asleep, that's your cue to move in for the kill. Gotcha! I'll be sure to keep an eye out for when it nods off. Oh, it's Princess Peach! Guess she's taking a break from being kidnapped. I'm so glad we never have to worry about Lady Palutena. She can take care of herself. Really? Wasn't she imprisoned by Medusa for a bit there? That hardly counts. After all, we were just freshmen back then. That would never happen now that we're more experienced. 
Peach has been in plenty of scrapes herself, so she ought to be quite experienced. And yet, she never learns. Sometimes I wonder if she just lets herself get kidnapped for fun. I don't know about that. It seems like tossing vegetables is more her idea of fun. She'll pelt you with them the whole match if you don't watch it. But she can't reload when she's jumping, so keep your eye on what she's up to. Princess Peach? Actually, that's Princess Daisy, Princess of Sarasaland. She was kidnapped by a space alien named Tatanga, but Mario rescued her. Right. Kidnapped, then rescued by Mario. Princess Peach! No. Daisy doesn't get kidnapped as often as Peach does. Okay. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Daisy always gets kidnapped by Tatonga. Wink. Look! Daisy is a totally different person from Peach. She's much more, like, energetic and stuff. You know, she's a go-getter. Plus, her symbol is a daisy. Pretty cool to have a symbol that's also your name. Yeah, but have you ever seen Peach and Daisy in the same place at the same time? Pit, if you had a symbol, it would be in the shape of an armpit. When I think of Bowser, I always picture him deep in his castle stealing himself for a fight. Or, you know, playing golf or racing a go-kart. He's looking pretty aggro today. Must be because he's in a fighting game. When Mario first fought Bowser, I hear he had to use an axe to chop down a rope bridge and drop the big guy. It all sounds like something from an 8-bit action movie. I won't lie. I'm a little scared. Don't be. Bowser may be powerful, but he also leaves big openings. Fight smart and look for chances to counterattack. Two of them? That's cheating! Say hello to the Ice Climbers. They haven't always had the best cooperation, but their teamwork seems pretty solid now. Okay, sure. But what about the fact that there are two of them? Didn't they get kicked out of Smash for illegal teaming? Well, they're back now, so I'm pretty sure it's allowed. I mean, you could pair up with Dark Pit if you wanted to. Never! Your physical powers are equally matched. It's a perfect fit, really. That is true. Hmm. Now then, which one of you is the leader? Definitely me. No way. I'm the leader. Oh yeah, they make a perfect team. In any case, when fighting the Ice Climbers, defeat Nana first to isolate Popo. Try to separate them. It's Sheik! Sheik appears to be wearing a traditional Sheikah outfit this time around. Ooh, so exotic. That armor is right up my alley. I wonder if it comes in a children's small. I always get nervous when Sheik gets close. If I make one wrong move, I'll get pummeled with a flurry of quick attacks. His attacks may be fast, but they aren't very strong. That's why he'll try to end the fight quickly. He's also very light, so focus on launching Sheik at lower damage percentages. And he doesn't have much reach, so keep your distance until you're ready to rush him with your upper dash arm. Good advice. But you guys do know Sheik is just Zelda, right? In disguise? Wait, is there a new timeline? Uh, is that... <laughs> Princess Zelda? Yes, that's Zelda from A Link to the Past. She's a descendant of the Seven Sages. When she was captured, she used telepathy to ask Link for help. Pit! Pit! Go get me a cinnamon roll! Right away, Zel- Hey! Knock it off, Reedy. Focus, Pit. Zelda has a projectile attack called Din's Fire. It can be steered through the air, kind of like your arrows. The trajectory of Din's fire is really hard to see, so it's important to pay extra close attention when fighting her. Pit! Pit! Get me a glazed donut with rainbow sprinkles! Yes, right away! A glazed donut with rainbow- Ugh, stop it! I don't think that's a real doctor. I wouldn't be so sure. He delivers crushing blows, so he must be very knowledgeable about anatomy. He's a quack. I hear he treats viruses by randomly throwing medication at them. Doesn't seem very safe. I'm so glad Skyworld doesn't have checkups. Dr. Mario is slower than the regular Mario, but he's also more powerful. Don't get sent to the emergency room. You don't know what kind of treatment you'll get. Ooh, 
it's a baby Pikachu! That's Pichu. It's the form before it evolves into Pikachu. Pichu is still learning to harness its electrical power, so it takes damage whenever it uses electricity. Just looking at Pichu makes me want to cheer it on. You can do it, Pichu! Kick his butt! Pichu might be cute, but don't underestimate it. Its small stature allows it to move very quickly. Look out for grabs after it dashes. Why is it that smaller fighters are always fast? You'll understand when you grow up, Pit. One day you'll wake up unable to do things you could in the past. That's... depressing. Oh... Is that what it's like for you, Lady Palutena? Don't make me smite you. Do you know who this is, Pit? Falco Lombardi? Ace pilot on the Star Fox team? Great jumper! Exactly. Captain Falcon's already got the Falcon motif. Falco looks more like a pheasant to me. Mmm, sounds delicious. If I were you, I'd keep your voice down. If he hears you, he'll make you eat his boots. Falco used to be the leader of a galactic gang, so you can expect him to be good in a fight. I'm starting to freak out here. I mean, this guy is famous throughout the entire galaxy. Watch out for long-range attacks, like his reflector shot and blaster. You'll see he's quick on the draw. Huh. Get a load of Mr. Fancy Pants here. Is that jealousy I detect in your voice, Pit? Why would I be jealous of Marth? Well, he's a prince for starters. A handsome prince. And you're just... Anyway, Prince Marth's most dangerous attack comes from the tip of his sword. Avoid his blade when you're at mid-range. So I should either attack him from a distance or get up close and personal. He's got a counter as well, so be on guard when you go hand-to-hand. -hand. If you're attacking from afar, use items to improve your chances. That lady's moves are awfully similar to Marth's. That's Lucina. She used to introduce herself as Marth, so certain similarities seem inevitable. What? She stole someone else's identity? Well, it wasn't quite like that. Marth had become a legend by her time, the Hero King. So Lucina took that name to bolster the morale of her own army. Think of it as a symbol of hope in the depths of despair. That's pretty deep. You can't tell by looking at her, but I hear she's got a great sense of humor. I'll try cracking a few jokes and see if that softens her up. The tip of her blade doesn't deal as much damage as Marth's. But her attacks are more balanced, even if they are not tremendously powerful. Is it just me? Or has Link lost weight? Yes and no. That's young Link. He's the child version of the Hero of Time. The Hero of Time? The Link who mastered the Ocarina of Time and faced Ganondorf. Link's actions as the Hero of Time created parallel worlds, and from there many different legends were born. I don't follow. What do you mean? If you were defeated by Medusa, Palutena wouldn't be here today, right? True, but what does that have to do with anything? We may have triumphed over Medusa in this timeline, but in a different timeline, you lost that fight, leaving Medusa and Hades to rule the world. Every action and inaction creates infinite parallel worlds. You're only in one of them. Wait, I'm not the only me? And nothing I do matters because another me will do the opposite? Then what's the point of doing anything? Breathe, Pit. Focus on young Link's short reach. He may be fast, but try to outrange him and anticipate his movements. Ganondorf? Oh, man. Ganon has taken many forms throughout the ages. This form of Ganondorf is known as the Great King of Evil. He's a Gerudo warlock. The Gerudo are a desert tribe consisting mostly of women, but once every hundred years, a man is born to the Gerudo. Ganondorf is said to be that man. Really? They get one man and he turns out to be Ganondorf? Ugh, talk about bad luck. Anyway, Ganon gets sealed away, is resurrected, rinse and repeat, ad infinitum. The end. What? There's more to it than that. Link is said to be a different person in each incarnation, but some people think Ganondorf is the same person born over and over again. The ultimate evil that can't be killed. No wonder he's called the Calamity. As a fighter, Ganondorf is an aggressive heavyweight. He hits hard, so if you see him winding up, get out of the way and counterattack. That's Mewtwo, right? National Pokedex number 150.
Mewtwo is a legendary Pokemon that was created by resequencing Mew's genes. I will never forgive these humans! Poor thing. It's a walking science experiment. Mewtwo is arguably the most powerful Pokemon in existence. Some people spend their entire lives trying to catch it. It's an affront to nature and must be destroyed immediately! Think about it. Every action has a butterfly effect. Who knows what kind of impact it can have on the ecosystem? Grow a heart, Viridi. It didn't choose to be a freak of nature. Feel sorry for it all you want, Pit, but don't underestimate it. Mewtwo's confusion move can both flip opponents and reflect projectiles. Look! Marth dyed his hair red. Actually, that's the young lion, Roy. The young lion? He's 15 years old. 15 years old? Is that even legal? It is in Ostia, where Roy spends his days as a noble being smart, brave, and dependable. I bet he smells like heaven. How am I supposed to compete with a guy like that? By not getting too close, for one thing, his binding blade is extremely powerful at close range. Or maybe instead of fighting, he'd be willing to talk out our differences? Don't be a baby, Pit. Just keep Roy at a distance and you'll be fine. He's only dangerous if he gets close. But once he gets close, prepare to get mauled. Whoa! It's Krom! He finally made it to the fight! He's the prince of the Halidom of Elise, and the descendant of the hero king Marth. Marth's sword and Krom's sword are both named Fulchin, right? But the designs seem a bit different. Are they really the same sword? The sword Krom wields is Falchion, but Marth's sword is Exalted Falchion. And Lucina's sword is Parallel Falchion. Falchion, Falchion, that word makes no sense. Falchion can become the Exalted Falchion once the Fire Emblem brings out its true form. If Krom can fight Marth using a weaker sword, Krom must be stronger. I wouldn't say that. People with farts. Pretty sure the style of weapon doesn't make a huge difference. Hey, it's a shadow bug. No, that's just Mr. Game and Watch. Watch out for number nine, Pit. Uh, what are you talking about? Mr. Game and Watch's judge attack displays random numbers, and when it displays nine, the attack is devastating. Getting hit with a nine will knock out any fighter with a single strike, no matter who it is. When his back is against the wall, Mr. Game & Watch might try his luck with a judge attack. Leaving victory up to luck doesn't seem like the best strategy. Well, luck is part of every victory. So you'd better watch yourself, Pit. I wonder what Meta Knight looks like under that mask. Apparently quite similar to Kirby. If he took off his mask, could he inhale things too? Maybe. And maybe he has Kirby's copy ability as well. So if a maskless Meta Knight copied a masked Meta Knight... Well, then he'd just be back where he started. Anyway, be careful of his quick blade and his spinning attacks. They don't have a lot of power, so use your shield until you see an opening. Wait a sec. Is that... me? It certainly appears to be the case. You're awfully calm about this, Lady Palutena. Well, we've been through a similar situation in the past. Don't you recall? Yeah, but it's still freaky. It's like looking through a twisted mirror. That reminds me. You know how Dark Pit came from a mirror? Then why doesn't he move left when I move right, and vice versa? Beats me. But you're supposed to know everything. Don't you have an all-seeing eye and an all-knowing brain and all that? My all-seeing eye sees you getting hit. Oh man, really? I'm sure the true Pit would triumph over any doppelganger. So I guess now we'll see if you're the real deal. I meant to ask you about one more thing. Have you noticed that I can kind of fly on my own a bit? Actually, it's called jumping, Pit. Sorry to be the one to break it to you. Hey, it's Patu! Will you quit calling me that? Now where did you disappear to after the fight with Hades? Actually, Dark Pit works for me now. He's an officer in the forces of nature. What? No way! Just because we fought together once doesn't mean we're all buddy-buddy now. In fact, the Lightning Chariot and Phosphora are also both under my command. The battle isn't over yet. Viridi's interests and mine just happen to overlap. So for this fight, 
I'll be happy to launch you into the stratosphere. Your powers are perfectly matched here. It all comes down to skill. Who's that woman? That's Zero Suit Samus. She usually wears heavy armor, but not in this incarnation. Even so, she's still pretty powerful. She has some pretty hurdy looking equipment. Getting kicked by those jet boots has got to sting. You have a good deal of hurdy looking equipment yourself, Pit. Yeah, and can you believe that there's some fighters that battle empty-handed? Crazy! It's all about discipline, not weaponry. Don't worry, though. When we get home, I'll enroll you in Palatina's boot camp. That'll fix you right up. Or I can just keep my weapons. Yeah, let's do that. Anyway, Zero Suit Samus is a difficult target to hit. Keep your attacks sure and steady. Um, Wario kind of smells. That's to be expected. For his final smash, he munches garlic and transforms into his super anti-hero alter ego, Wario Man. Uh, Wario Man? Yes. Legend has it that Wario once caught a cold, accidentally ate a piece of nasty garlic, and turned into Wario Man. Huh. So nasty garlic is the key to Wario's power. Great. <laughs> He's a real charmer, that one. Speaking of which, eating seems to make Wario very gassy. Ah, oh, TMI? I'm only telling you this for your own good. He's a ticking time bomb. Watch out for his sudden farts, and all farts in general. They're gross and dangerous. This job is really the worst sometimes. Snake? The legendary mercenary himself. I never thought I'd get a chance to fight him again! Snake is fully loaded with explosives and firearms. Don't get blown up. I bet if I put some bombs on the end of my arrows, they'd be more powerful. Very original, Pit. You can't attach bombs to arrows of light since they aren't actual arrows. Okay, then let's bust out the cannons. Leave the bombs and guns to Snake. You focus on what you do best, whatever that is. It's Ike! There are two versions of Ike, the Path of Radiance version and the Radiant Dawn version. Dawn? Radiance? He's basically either a mercenary or a hero. The two versions of Ike may look and sound a bit different, but his strength doesn't change at all. But one of them is three years older than the other. Shouldn't the older one be stronger? Yeah, you'd think the older one would have three more years of training under his belt. Maybe he skipped three years of arm days. I somehow doubt that. Have you seen the way he swings that sword? One blow from that sword could do more damage than two of yours, Pit. Be careful. That little twerp is bossing those Pokémon around! That's the Pokémon trainer. Looks like you'll be fighting Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard today. All the original starters? This fighter is a fan of the classics! Do you think Pokémon get claustrophobic being trapped in those little balls? I hear Pokéballs are much bigger on the inside. Ugh, but what about the weak Pokémon who get left in their balls and forgotten? I mean, everyone has, like, hundreds of them in their box. Huh. I never thought about... Oh, pick a pit! No! Now, Pit, I'm sure those abandoned Pokémon are all playing together at a farm upstate. Anyway, commanding three Pokémon is really tricky. Pay attention to the trainer's patterns and tendencies and find a way to exploit them. Is that a Squirtle? The Tiny Turtle Pokémon. Mmm, I have a sudden craving for Tiny Turtle Stew. What is wrong with you? Squirtle is one of the first Pokémon you can get. And this time around, Squirtle has more water moves in its arsenal. Getting a little wet doesn't bother me. Don't underestimate Water Pit. With enough force and precision, it becomes a blade that can cut through anything. You're right. All these fighters are here for a reason. I can't let my guard down against anyone. When Squirtle charges at you with its shell, guard and then counterattack when it's up in the air. That's Bulbasaur. Or is it Venusaur? It's Ivysaur. The Pokémon's form before it evolves into Venusaur. I know I'm supposed to fight it, but I gotta say, it's pretty stinking cute. Cute and deadly. Ivysaur's Vine Whip is as versatile as it is dangerous. It can be used as a whip, as the name implies, but it can also grab opponents. 
can even be used to grab onto ledges in a pinch. I see. Hey, I'm really grateful for all the info, Veridi. But where's Lady Palatina? Who cares? Palatina doesn't know squat about plants. This is where I shine. Where was I? Oh, the vine whip has a deceptively long reach. And don't forget about bullet seed as well. Oh, wow, it's Charizard. Just look at those majestic wings. Those wings might be majestic to look at, but they don't help much in the flying or gliding department. A little short in the flight department? That sounds like a familiar predicament. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, Pit, denial doesn't look good on you. At least Charizard can use its wings for attacking. And I can use my wings to fly. When Lady Palutena grants me the power of flight, that is. You know, I've always wondered if the power of flight would work anywhere besides your wings. Like your hair, for instance. That's not funny. I'd go bold. But I digress. Charizard has another attack called Flare Blitz. It's powerful but dangerous, even to Charizard. Either way, dodge the attack and keep your distance while waiting for your chance to strike back. Oh, look! It's Diddy Kong! He's Donkey Kong's little buddy. I wonder if he'd let me win for a banana. Don't underestimate him just because he's a monkey. He's faster and stronger than any human. As long as he can't fly, I'm good. He can't fly, but he does have a peanut pop gun and an inexhaustible supply of peanuts to shoot at you. So? I love peanuts! Not when they're pelting you in the face. I don't know. Still sounds pretty good to me. Oh, Pit! What won't you do for a snack? Fighting does take strength. Anyway, if you can hit Diddy Kong at just the right angle, he'll drop his rocket barrel pack. However, it explodes when it lands on the ground, so watch out. Who's the little guy? That's Lucas. He's from Tasmili Village. Just like Ness, he uses PSI. He might be the most introverted opponent you've ever fought. If he's so shy, why is he fighting? He's been through a lot. Things you couldn't imagine. Maybe fighting is how he copes with his feelings. Oh man, now I feel bad for him. Me too. Maybe you shouldn't fight him. Show no mercy! Launch this crybaby to the stars! Or that. Just remember, Lucas's attacks are a bit different from Ness's. Don't expect to be able to fight both of them the exact same way. For being a hedgehog, Sonic really isn't very spiky, is he? Seen spikier. It's true that you're more likely to find him curled up in a cute, harmless ball. Not so harmless. That round shape lets him spin dash with ease. I've changed my mind. He's entirely too spiky. Spin dashes are hard to stop, though. Just keep your cool and don't lose focus. You can stop spin attacks using your orbitars or bow. Who's this, Lady Palutena? That's King DDD. So, what do I need to know about him? He's a heavyweight, but has the ability to fly, and his hammer attack is no joke. But every fighter has a weakness. For example, when King DDD throws a spiky Gordo, you can hit it right back at him. If you can eliminate him by reflecting the Gordo, that will count as your KO. Uh, what's a KO? Good luck, Pit. Oh, it's that explorer guy. Did you know that Pikmin are named after Pik Pik Carrots, a vegetable native to Hokitate? Huh. Guess you learn something new every day. Enough with the point with fun facts. Let's talk fighting strategy. Here's what I know about those Pikmin. Red Pikmin are strong. Yellow Pikmin fly high. Blue Pikmin have the mightiest throw. White Pikmin are fastest. Purple Pikmin are heavy and the most powerful. Be sure you remember all this, Pit. Uh, right. There are also winged Pikmin that don't attack you. Numerous Pikmin will weigh down the winged Pikmin, and that's when you should attack. What the heck is that? Oh, that's Lucario. What about it? I've never seen a creature with a life force like that. It's like a current of water or a whirlpool. Oh, you mean Lucario's aura. Aura? Lucario can sense the life force, or aura, emanating from all living things. As Lucario takes more damage, its own aura grows stronger. Ingenious! Lucario sounds like a perfect fit for the forces of nature. We need to focus on the fight at hand. You focus on the fight at hand. 
I gotta catch my new recruit. No, stop! Pit, a wounded Lucario is stronger than it looks. Be extra careful when it's taken lots of damage. Look at that cute little robot. R.O.B. isn't a very creative name for a robot. I think it has a certain ring to it. No way! Any name is better than R.O.B. Like, hmm, how about Mr. HVC-012? That doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. How about RoboBuddy 3rd Edition? And what happened to the first two editions? Oh, good point. How about Zergblatron? Let's just keep things simple by calling him Rob. The light on its head shows you the strength of the laser it's about to fire. The moment you forget about it, it'll unleash its laser at maximum power, so watch out! This guy's eyes are the size of my head! He must be the famous Toon Link. Where'd he get that name from anyway? It's probably because he looks like he jumped right out of a cartoon. Ah, oh, I see how it is. <laughs> What's the matter, Pit? It's just not fair, Lady Palatina. One Link is handsome, and the other is adorable. They're cherry-picking the best bits! Aw, oh, is poor Pit feeling a little insecure today? Snap out of it, Pit! You have a fight to focus on. Here's the deal. Toon Link is quick, but lighter than regular Link. Don't get distracted by his weapons, or his intense cuteness. Just calm down and plan the best counterattack. Now this guy seems bad to the core. That's Wolf. He's Fox's arch nemesis and the leader of Star Wolf. Star Wolf is a group of mercenaries hired by Andros. Mercenaries will do anything for money. Generally speaking, although Star Fox is also technically a mercenary group, but they would never aid someone as evil as Andros. Wolf may be Fox's nemesis, but there's also a mutual respect between them. They even fought on the same side at one point. Kind of like Pit and Dark Pit. What? We're nothing like that. I don't respect him, and we're sure not all buddy-buddy. See? You guys are just like them. You even have the same glorified palette swap thing, uh, going on. In any case, Wolf's blaster shoots long-range projectiles, but it can also be a nuisance at close range. Oh, look! It's the villager! Villager, huh? That's not a very creative name. Well, what else do you call someone from a village? Anyway, you've got to respect the villager. Word has it no one fights fairer than that one. Why's that? Probably because where the villager's from, there's a mole who goes around punishing cheaters. Rossetti! Anyway, the villager's Lloyd rocket can do some real damage, so try your best to reflect it back. Hey, look! It's Mega Man! Is that really him? It is really him! Wow! I hope he busts out his Mega Buster! I want to see his charge shot! Flame Blast! Leaf Shield! Rush Coil! Metal Blade! Spark Shock! Air Shooter! Trash Bomber! Flash Claw! Flame Sword! Hard Who's this now? She's a wee fit trainer. She's an exercise coach. Of sorts. I hope you're in shape, Pit. Well, I walk everywhere, so I'm probably fine. Oh, of course. You're always at the beck and call of the goddess of light. Well, angels are messengers of the gods. That's where you're mistaken, Pit. Angels are nothing more than divine interns. In any case, be careful of her sun salutation move. It gets stronger with deep breathing. Who's that fellow? He's a wee fit trainer. He's an exercise coach, more or less. Pitt, do you exercise regularly? You know it! Is that because I work you too hard? Oh, no, no, no! Serving you gives my life meaning. I just... Need to do a little cardio to keep up with your demands. You're so sweet, Pit. And always at your service, Lady Palatina. Watch out for his sun salutation move. It gets stronger with deep breathing. And here we have Rosalina. Yes, she's the keeper of the Common Observatory and mother of the Lumas. Why is that comfy pillow following her? I love pillows. That is a Luma, and this is no pillow fight. It does look pretty plush, I have to say. You know, Rosalina seems kind of rough with the little guy. There are plenty.
plenty of Lumas, so losing a few isn't a big deal. Not a big deal? Lumas will sacrifice everything to protect Rosalina. They may not look like much, but they're powerful enough to send you flying, so be careful. This guy looks ready to fight! That's little Mac. As a boxer, fighting is sort of his thing. No one can match his strength on the ground, but in an aerial battle, he's helpless. So you want to get him in the air and keep him from landing. He has a power meter that once full, lets him unleash a lethal attack. He seems tiny though. Maybe that's why he's little Mac. But even with his small stature, he's triumphed over many heavyweight boxers. Pretty impressive for a puny human. Bring it on! The stronger the opponent, the more interesting the fight! That's the spirit! Uh... I can keep using my weapons, right? Ugh, yes. What is that? Some kind of ninja frog? That's the Pokémon Greninja. Its strengths are agility and speed. What looks like a scarf is actually its tongue. As a defensive measure, I suggest rubbing spicy peppers all over yourself. How can Greninja taste anything with its tongue hanging out like that? It could be one of those rare ninjas that just eats very slowly. What? But that makes no sense! Anyway, just tell me how to win. Greninja creates throwing stars out of compressed water and unleashes them at high speed. This attack is called Water Shuriken. If Greninja starts to charge up its Water Shuriken, be prepared to reflect it back. Wait a minute! Lady Palutena, you're fighting me? Don't sound so dismayed. Think of it more as a sporting event and less as a massacre. I really don't want to hurt you. That's awfully presumptuous of you, Pit. Please, I know better than anyone else what Lady Palutena is capable of. After all, I fought her once before. Good luck, Pit. You're gonna need it. Of course, I won't be giving you any hints during this battle. And no powers or centurions, either. Waka 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 waka. <laughs> yes, that's Pac-Man. He was born in 1980, which means he's one year older than Mario. Ah, another industry veteran. His most famous form is shaped like a pizza missing one slice. He has several attacks in this form. But the main thing is to avoid him taking a bite out of me. <laughs> yes, especially with those wings of yours. What do you mean? I bet they'd taste great with a little barbecue sauce. Okay, enough about that. This guy with the heavy-looking coat is... Robin. Ah, oh, that's right. Crom's friend. Really? Just Crom's friend? And his... tactical... person? Seriously? Tactician. Robin is a master tactician who can use both tomes and leaven swords. But Robin's attacks have limits on how many times they can be used. When Robin discards the sword or a book, it's time to be aggressive. Uh, you don't think a master tactician will see that coming? Probably, but losing the Leaven Sword puts Robin at a major disadvantage, so do your best to capitalize. This girl with the heavy looking coat is. Robin. Ah, that's right, Crom's friend. Really? Just Crom's friend? And his. tactical. person? Seriously? Tactician! Robin is a master tactician who can use both tomes and leaven swords. But Robin's attacks have limits on how many times they can be used. When Robin discards the sword or a book, it's time to be aggressive. Uh, you don't think a master tactician will see that coming? Probably, but losing the leaven sword puts Robin at a major disadvantage. So do your best to capitalize. I don't think I've seen that guy around. That's Shulk. He's 18 years old and clocks in at 5 feet 6 inches. That's a pretty fancy sword he's got. That's the Minato, the sword that defeated the Makanis. Makes us look like a bunch of jokers. The Minato can change Shulk's strengths and weaknesses. For example, it might increase his jumping ability while decreasing his defense. So for every strength he gains, he also gains a weakness. Yes, and Shulk can KO opponents easier when they've sustained more damage. But if you know his weakness, he's not too difficult to deal with. Let's not lose our heads, though! Is that Bowser Jr.? Yes, he's the heir to the Koopa throne. 
I wonder if his father bought him that junior clown car. It's decked out with all sorts of bells and whistles. Hey, I just thought of an even better name for it. How about the Shellicopter? Needless to say, the junior clown car is one tricky vehicle. It's immune to many attacks, so strike when Bowser Jr. is exposed. So what you're saying is to hit him from above, right? That's one of the Koopalings. Larry Koopa. Hmm. The resemblance to Bowser Jr. is strong. That Koopa clown car is the mass-produced type. I guess as heir to the throne, Bowser Jr. would get preferential treatment. The relationship between Bowser and the Koopalings is a real mystery. I kind of feel bad for them. That's sweet of you, but not very conducive to taking them down, Pit. That's one of the Koopalings. Roy Koopa. Hmm. The resemblance to Bowser Jr. is strong. That Koopa clown car is the mass-produced type. I guess as heir to the throne, Bowser Jr. would get preferential treatment. The relationship between Bowser and the Koopalings is a real mystery. I kind of feel bad for them. That's sweet of you, but not very conducive to taking them down, Pit. That's one of the Koopalings. Wendy O. Koopa. Hmm. The resemblance to Bowser Jr. is strong. That Koopa clown car is the mass-produced type. I guess as heir to the throne, Bowser Jr. would get preferential treatment. The relationship between Bowser and the Koopalings is a real mystery. I kind of feel bad for them. That's sweet of you, but not very conducive to taking them down, Pit. That's one of the Koopalings. Iggy Koopa. Hmm. The resemblance to Bowser Jr. is strong. That Koopa clown car is the mass-produced type. I guess as heir to the throne, Bowser Jr. would get preferential treatment. The relationship between Bowser and the Koopalings is a real mystery. I kind of feel bad for them. That's sweet of you, but not very conducive to taking them down, Pit. That's one of the Koopalings. Morton Koopa Jr. Hmm. The resemblance to Bowser Jr. is strong. That Koopa clown car is the mass-produced type. I guess as heir to the throne, Bowser Jr. would get preferential treatment. The relationship between Bowser and the Koopalings is a real mystery. I kind of feel bad for them. That's sweet of you, but not very conducive to taking them down, Pit. That's one of the Koopalings. Lemmy Koopa. Hmm. The resemblance to Bowser Jr. is strong. That Koopa clown car is the mass-produced type. I guess as heir to the throne, Bowser Jr. would get preferential treatment. The relationship between Bowser and the Koopalings is a real mystery. I kind of feel bad for them. That's sweet of you, but not very conducive to taking them down, Pit. That's one of the Koopalings. Ludwig von Koopa. Hmm. The resemblance to Bowser Jr. is strong. That Koopa clown car is the mass-produced type. I guess as heir to the throne, Bowser Jr. would get preferential treatment. The relationship between Bowser and the Koopalings is a real mystery. I kind of feel bad for them. That's sweet of you, but not very conducive to taking them down, Pit. I don't want to fight that cute dog. Oh, you won't. You'll be fighting the dog and the duck. So if I win, is duck on the menu for dinner? <sighs> Let's take things one step at a time, Pit. These two may seem like a duo, but they're actually a trio. Together, they're known as Duck Hunt. So where's the third team member? Listen, just be careful. You could get shot out of nowhere. A mysterious sharpshooter, eh? Well, that does make things more exciting. Oh, it's Ryu! Or is it Ryu? Ryu may be the world's most well-known fighter. He's faced off against all kinds of competitors over the years. Cyborgs, androids, mutants, giant monsters, superheroes, aliens, and demons, to name a few. Well then, let's add handsome angels to that list. Huh? Ryu has two final smashes, Shinku Hadoken and Shin Shoryuken. Shin Shoryuken is a delight to behold. Try to get hit by it. Not fair! Lady Palutena, will you give me a move that people want to be hit with? Okay, Pit, but only if you stop making dumb jokes. Can I ask that of you? Sure you can! You walked right into that one. Whoa! It's Ken! He's the son of the Masters family and a U.S. martial arts tournament champion. I heard he's filthy rich. Really, Pit? Sounds like someone needs to up their angel's allowance. Back to Ken. 
He's energetic, cheerful, and boisterous. Pretty much the opposite of Ryu, who has a much more serious personality. Uh, why are their attacks so similar then? Ken and Ryu are friends that train together in the same fighting style. It's a martial art close to karate that originates from Ansatsuken. They're known to use Hado as well. You know, Ken doesn't seem like such a bad guy. Let's just hope he doesn't give in to the dark Hado. Okay, gossip time. Did you know Ken's wife, Eliza, is also Julia's sister, and Julia is married to Guile? What? So Ken is Guile's brother-in-law? Who's this handsome devil? You mean Cloud? Soldier first class? And I thought my hair was spiky. Too bad you don't have any fire moves. He's like a 50% hairspray. And 50% buster sword. It's pretty impressive. Beware his limit charge. Once his gauge is full, he can unleash a devastating attack. One of his limit break moves is called Finishing Touch. It doesn't do much damage, but it can launch you off the stage in a split second. Now that I know Cloud's tricks, this one's in the bag. Don't let Cloud rain on your parade. Strategy is key. For Nor! For Hashido! I make my own fate! Sounds like someone finally finished all three paths. When you're fighting Corrin, watch out for Dragon Fang. Corrin transforms into a dragon to attack. It's not pretty. Corrin has led a rough life. Having to make enemies of your family can't be easy. As they say, blood is thicker than water. But they also say a close friend is better than a distant relative, so I don't know. But all the siblings have dragon blood in their veins, right? Why can't they just be one big, happy family? If only it were that simple. You're thinking about it too hard. The roots may be more important than the branches, but you need the branches to, uh, get the fruit. Or whatever. Oh, a number of witches entered Skyworld! Ah! Bayonetta, nemesis of angels, slaughterer of centurions, wearer of questionable outfits. I wonder why Bayonetta hunts angels. If I had to guess, I'd say she drags them to the underworld so demons can devour their souls. Ah! Woo! <sighs> okay. But the angels Bayonetta hunts aren't nice angels like me. They're monsters, right? Angels can take many forms, just as goddesses can. Take Palutena, for instance. Her current appearance is something humans can comprehend, but it's not her true form. You're one to talk, Viridi. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting tips, please! Ugh! If you get caught in one of her combos, just, like, wiggle around or something. Uh, are you guys seeing this? This girl can transform herself into an octopus! A squid, actually. This curious life form is an inkling. They're squids who evolved to shapeshift into human form. Inklings rose to power 12,000 years after mammals went extinct! Extinct?! Yep! The monkeys were eradicated! Booyah! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. If I'm fighting against an inkling, then... What year is it right now?! Don't think about it too hard, Pit. It'll just make your brain sweat. 12,000 years of missed meals? Oh man. Focus, Pit. If an inkling hits you with an ink attack, you'll take extra damage until the ink evaporates. However, inklings can't use ink attacks if their ink tank is empty. That's the time to strike. Uh, are you guys seeing this? This guy can transform himself into an octopus! A squid, actually. This curious life form is an inkling. They're squids who evolved to shapeshift into human form. Inklings rose to power 12,000 years after mammals went extinct! Extinct?! Yep! The monkeys were eradicated! Booyah! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. If I'm fighting against an inkling, then... What year is it right now?! Don't think about it too hard, Pit. It'll just make your brain sweat. 12,000 years of missed meals? Oh man. Focus, Pit. If an inkling hits you with an ink attack, you'll take extra damage until the ink evaporates. However, inklings can't use ink attacks if their ink tank is empty. That's the time to strike. Ridley confirmed! Uh, yes, that's Ridley, Samus's arch-nemesis. 
I never thought I'd have to fight an alien space dragon in Smash. Kirby's a space alien too, you know. Jerry's still out on him being a dragon, though. Ridley may look like a mindless killing machine, but he's exceedingly intelligent. He's also the leader of the ruthless space pirates. So what's the story behind him and Samus? Ridley killed Samus's parents when she was young. That's messed up. Samus and Ridley first fought in the depths of Norfair on planet Zevis. They crossed paths again when Ridley stole the baby Metroid. Meta Ridley was made through genetic engineering and cybernetic enhancements. Omega Ridley is the one infused with Phazon. Neo Ridley was born when an ex-parasite absorbed Ridley's genes. And yet another Ridley was created by cloning cells found on Samus's suit. You sure know a lot about Ridley, and none of it is about how to fight him. There's also a robot version of Ridley. He built it himself, which officially makes him a narcissist. Is that canon? Canon or not, all of these Ridleys shared the same fate. They were all defeated by Samus. Ah, not surprising. Samus is a beast. So is Ridley. Mind the sharp barb on his tail. Whoa! It's Simon Belmont! Oh, do you know him? Yeah. We hit the scene around the same time. The legacy of the vampire-hunting Belmont clan is very interesting. How long have they been hunting vampires? Leon Belmont's first vampire encounter was in 1094 AD. The last known heir, Julius Belmont, defeated Dracula in 1999. So, carry the one... A thousand years?! Other clans appeared and parallel worlds were created. The fate of the Belmont clan has been split in many ways. The most iconic symbol of House Belmont is their legendary whip, the Vampire Killer. A fighter that uses a whip? You don't see that every day. It's a magical whip that only the Belmont bloodline can wield. An irreplaceable weapon passed down for generations. I wonder how many monsters and demons it's vanquished. It must smell terrible! Getting back to the point. Be careful of Simon's long-range attacks. The weapons he uses may seem simple, but they don't pull any punches. Um, who's this guy with the chain whip? That would be Richter Belmont. Pardon the interruption. Ah, don't sneak up on us like that! Ah, Alucard, hello! Pitt, meet Alucard. He's the son of Count Dracula. Dracula's your dad? That's so cool! Hey, do you have fangs? Are they sharp? Pitt! That's pretty personal! And do you really want to bring up blood-sucking things? What are you... Oh, no. You're not here to suck my blood, are you? I need it! No, I don't like the taste. And my mother taught me not to cause suffering. My father chose another path, and so I've sworn to stop him. Richter here is the descendant of a man who shared my burden. He has a strong sense of justice and is an honest man but that in turn makes him easy to manipulate. He was once cursed by the Dark Priest Shaft, who used him as a puppet to control Dracula's castle. So you're saying he's kind of, uh, simple? Don't throw stones if you live in a glass house, Pit. I very much doubt that you could effectively run a castle. In any case, Richter is a formidable opponent. Underestimating him would be your undoing. Alucard, do you also intend to participate? I am merely here to assist Richter, and anyone else who calls upon me. Who's this guy? Talk about your super heavyweight. That's the leader of the Kremlings, King K. Rule. Kremlings? A race of crocodile people. I hear they like bananas. Blech. But I thought Donkey Kong was the one who liked bananas. I'm pretty sure all mouth-breathing knuckle-draggers like bananas. They're like the litmus test for idiocy. Mm, I don't know what that means, but I love bananas! The prosecution rests! Back to the fight at hand. Some attacks will fail to penetrate King K. Rule's large leathery belly. You might want to consider incorporating more grabs into your battle strategy. That poor dog looks lost. I'll check its collar. That's Isabel. She has bells on her head. That's why she is a bell. Her day job is assistant to the mayor of some town. I hear she's the town's hardest worker. She's also cute, courageous, and modest, which is why everyone loves her. Hmm, she's overrated if you ask me. No one did. 
If Isabel has so much going for her, why is she fighting in Smash? Yeah, it seems like a weird choice. Maybe she just wants to get some exercise. There's gotta be less violent ways to get your blood pumping. She's from the same town as the villager, so their moves are somewhat alike. She's just full of surprises, though. Be extra careful of her fishing rod. She'll reel you in like a fish. Ha! That tiger's on fire! How astute of you, Pit. That's Incineroar. Before it evolved into this form, it was a cute little litten. Incineroar is unpredictable, self-centered, and rambunctious. Although it's supposedly great with children. It specializes in wrestling moves. Brute force is its M.O., but it's no slouch in the technical department either. Incineroar is also a performer at heart. So when it lands a big attack, it likes to show off for the crowd. Now that you mention it, I do hear crowd cheers sometimes. It's almost like an audience is watching us fight. Incineroar has an attack called Revenge that feels like it was inspired by pro wrestling. If Incineroar takes damage while Revenge is active, its body ignites and its attacks become more powerful. Well, if that happens, I'll just let everyone else fight Incineroar until it wears off. Then I'll swoop in and steal the KO. Sure. If you want to be that guy, might as well edgeguard while you're at it. Tell me about this fighter. Here we have a me brawler. This fight's gonna be really easy if my opponent's unarmed. Listen to Mr. Tough Guy here. That's pretty presumptuous to think that this fight's already in the bag. Oh, like you're one to talk about looking down on others. But Veridi's right. You can't underestimate this foe. The me brawler is far from being unarmed. Those fists are weapons in and of themselves. They pack a real punch, so you should watch out for even straightforward moves like the side smash. Okay, okay. No talking trash about any of my opponents. At least not until after the fight. Uh, what do we have here? That's a me sword fighter, Pit. As a general rule of thumb, you should take armed opponents seriously. Which really isn't easy in this case. That me is awfully funny looking. No arguments there. But me's are full of special moves, so it's essential to figure out what they're capable of quickly. They often have some unexpected techniques, too. If you get careless, you may find yourself in big trouble. That gear looks like it belongs to Mega Man. Or maybe Samus. Wrong and wrong. That's a me gunner. All of them carry arm cannons and backpacks. That backpack looks heavy, but that's because it's filled with different types of ammunition. How do me gunners choose which type of ammo to shoot? There's a motion-controlled trigger in the arm cannon. So the stance they take when firing tells me where they're aiming. Motion control. That's downright revolutionary. We should patent that. Hmm. Sounds like the goddess of nature has turned into the goddess of commerce. <laughs>